Welcome back to the series, your last day of blockchain. Now that we've finished writing the code for our console application, we'll deploy it to the Algorand testnet. That might sound complicated, but it's actually super easy. Previously, we were running this application on a default private network provided by Reach. Generally, a devnet refers to a private network made up of one developer. It's a good place for testing your application before putting it on a public network. Reach provides a devnet for each consensus network they support. Now it's time to test this on a larger network, specifically Algorand's testnet. Testnet is an Algorand network that acts as a mirror for Algorand's mainnet. The mainnet is where real-world transactions take place. The only difference is that tokens on the testnet are worthless. They have no value, whereas tokens on the mainnet do have value. The testnet acts as a sandbox. You can play around with new accounts and configurations using fake money. Think Monopoly money. If we use the testnet, Reach can no longer create our accounts. We'll need to create accounts separately using MyAlgo. We can do that by going to wallet.myalgo.com slash new account. And we get a disclaimer. This has to do with backing up your passwords or any secret items associated with your account. It's also important to note that the account is tied to your browser instance. So if you're using a new browser instance, you'll need to recover your account. Let's accept it. We'll give it a password. Now we'll create a wallet that will be used in the transactions for our application. There are a few different options here, but we'll create a new wallet. The most secure wallet is a hardware wallet. We could go into a long discussion about the different types of wallets and which ones you can choose, but here we'll create one in my algo since we're only going to use it on the testnet. Your account has a regular password, but each wallet you create will also have a mnemonic phrase. This is a phrase of 25 words, and it's provided to you when you sign up for a new blockchain wallet. With this phrase, you can recover your wallet at a later date, which is why it's often called a seed. It's a seed from which you can recover access to your wallet. Given that, do not share it with anyone. It grants full access to your tokens. It's like handing out your banking password. Let's click continue. Here, we can see the different words in our phrase. Now, I won't be putting any real tokens in this wallet since I'm showing you the seed phrase, but the things that are important here are the words and the ordering of the words. In order to recover your account, both must be accurate. Let's copy this and put it somewhere safe. I'll put it in my notes app for now. It'll only be used for our test app, but you should remember yours. We have a copy of it, so let's check the box and click continue. We get a quiz, and it's a quiz to see if you really remember your phrase. I'll complete it. We'll refer to this wallet as Alice. We'll create a separate Algo account and a separate wallet for Bob. We have an account and a wallet for Alice. Let's switch over to the testnet. Instead of the mainnet, we'll select testnet. No transactions yet. We also have zero tokens or zero algos. Let's fund our account with some money. We'll go to bank.testnet.algorand.network. Here, we can put some tokens into our account on the testnet. All we have to do is put in our wallet address. If you remember from the first video, the way we send transactions on the network is by sending them to an address, similar to an email address. Our address is at the top of our wallet. Let's copy and paste it into the other window. 
we get a status code of 200. This means success. At the time of recording, this will put 10 tokens into our account for testing. If you received a different status code, make sure you copied over your wallet address correctly. We now have 10 tokens in our account. We also have a completed transaction with an identifier. It shows 10 tokens coming from Algorand. Let's click the identifier. Here, we can see the Algorand Blockchain Explorer. We can see all the transactions taking place on the testnet. We can see the transactions on the main net by switching over to the main network. Look at all these transactions coming in. If you're not seeing the 10 tokens or the transaction from Algorand, make sure you're still on the testnet. So we've created Alice's account, created a wallet for Alice, and funded it with 10 tokens. Let's do the same for Bob. We'll need to use a separate browser instance. This could mean opening up a different browser type, such as Safari or Firefox, or if you're using Google Chrome, creating a separate profile will do the trick. Let's use Safari. Now we have two accounts, one for Bob and one for Alice. They also have their own wallets funded with 10 tokens. In order to run our application on the testnet, we'll need to make some configuration changes. First, We'll set the provider network to testnet. We'll use the reach standard library. We just created our accounts on the testnet, so let's remove the option to create them in our application. We'll remove the question and the if statement. Previously, we linked the account using an account secret. To link the testnet account, we'll be using the account's mnemonic. So instead of from secret, we'll say from mnemonic. That's it for the code. In addition to this, we'll also need to make some changes to our environment. Specifically, we'll need to set the connector mode to algo live. We'll do this for Alice, and we'll do this for Bob. This will be read in by Reach, so that our application is deployed and run on the testnet. Let's run our rock, paper, scissors application on the Algorand testnet. Let's start with Alice. Reach run. And to make this a little more visual, we'll have Alice on the left-hand side and Bob on the right. We'll say, this is Alice, and we'll paste in the mnemonic. In order for it to be read incorrectly, we'll need each word in the mnemonic to be separated by spaces, so we'll remove these commas. And we'll paste it in. Now typically, you would not paste your mnemonic into another developer's application. Usually, your application would be a browser application, and you could use an extension to connect your account more securely. We'll also have Alice deploy the contract, but before we deploy it, let's start up Bob's terminal. and we'll paste in the mnemonic. Again, no commas in between, only spaces. We'll have Alice deploy the contract and we'll say, Bob, no. Now, in deploying the contract, we're actually deploying the application. It's a contract that happens to have the rules of our application within it. We'll wager five tokens. And there's our contract. Let's paste in the identifier. We'll accept the wager. 
And now the game will start. Alice will play rock. And we'll have Bob play paper. Bob will win this round. And they both see that Bob wins. Alice loses tokens and Bob gets the tokens. Now you may notice that each of these steps take about five seconds. That's because the confirmation time of each block on the Algorand testnet is five seconds. That's how long it takes to confirm it with the rest of the network, to confirm the transaction is valid. So our devnet was much faster. With the devnet, we had a confirmation time of nearly zero because it was a local private network. There were no other computers on the network to confirm the transaction with. This made it perfect for testing as we developed the application. So we just deployed our first decentralized application on a real consensus network, the Algorand testnet. Let's take a look at Alice and Bob's wallets. So there are quite a few transactions here, and these were made by our rock, paper, scissors application. Alice deployed the contract, and in deploying the contract, she paid the deposit of 0.1 algos. We can also see that Alice pays the wager of 5 algos, and since she lost the game, she does not get those tokens back. Let's take a look at Bob's wallet. Bob does not deploy the contract, so we don't see the deposit transactions here. However, we do see that Bob provides his share of 5 tokens. Now some of these transactions involve tokens and some do not. Let's take a look at one of Bob's transactions. This happens to be the transaction where Bob plays his hand. We can actually decode the arguments associated with this transaction. We can see what hand Bob committed to the blockchain. We'll just copy this first argument and we'll feed it into this converter. Bob's hand was paper, which is represented as one in our program. In the decoder, we see one. Everything committed to the blockchain is public. This includes the wager, Alice and Bob's hand, and the contract itself. This transaction was actually committed in a block with several other transactions. These are transactions from other decentralized applications. They were all committed to this block in the blockchain. To see all the transactions associated with our application, we can use the contract identifier. This is all the blockchain activity associated with this contract, with this application. Isn't that so exciting? So where do we go from here? Reach has a ton of resources to help you continue in blockchain development. You may want to take a look at their workshop page. This provides a series of projects you can do to practice and learn Reach. Another option is to take a look at the guide. Learn about the background of some of the concepts used in Reach programs. You could also dive into the reference and look at the minute features of Reach. Instead of using JavaScript, you could also use a different technology for the front end, such as React or Python. Congrats on finishing the series! I really enjoyed creating it, and I hope you enjoyed creating your first Algorand decentralized application with Reach. If you have any questions about blockchain development, please join me in the Reach Discord in the Days of Blockchain channel. I'll see you next time, and happy coding!